Well, good Friday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great finally freaking Friday. We got our live stream in about an hour and a half from now, and I hope you guys join us. We'll be wrapping up mini camp and um, give you the latest uh, thoughts and everything about what the Cowboys are doing. If there's anything on the horizon as far as uh, trades, free agent signings, picking their nose, anything of the above uh, going forward. Um, I want to touch on something because, you know, this week was interesting because Zach Martin kind of let it be known that, and, and I still can't believe that Zach Martin is the elder statesman now on the offensive line. It's crazy to me. Um, I was fortunate enough to be at the Pro Bowl in 2014. And I have a picture that um, it's autographed by um, two of the three, Tyron Smith and um, Zach Martin. And they're at the Pro Bowl, and they're walking off into the sunset. And it's hard to believe that Zach Martin's the only one that's left on the team. And the fact that he is now the old guy on the offensive line. Zach Martin has been incredible. And he kind of let it, let it be known that, you know, in his mind, he's contemplating, contemplating this being the last year of him being here. So the Cowboys, you may want to look at this and say, we need to really do some work here. You know, we really try, need to try and make this a special season. As far as the offensive line goes, we know that we have two departed players, the venerable Tyron Smith, who, when he's played, has played unbelievable. The problem, of course, has been over the course of the last, you know, since 2016, he's been injured every year. And for the most part, more in the later years. This past year, he got 13 games in, which was unbelievable because he hadn't done that in since, like, you know, 2018, 2019. Be that as it may... A lot's been made up about the Cowboys' offensive line going forward with having Cooper Beebe at center. I like to think of him as Juggernaut. And having Tyler Guyton on the outside replacing Tyron Smith. Well, here's the good news on the offensive line for me. First of all, you have Zach Martin, who has been unbelievable in his career. To think that he's got eight holding penalties and nine Pro Bowls. Just unbelievable. And doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. And I'm not mad at him for getting the extension, you know, the added money on his contract, even though it's conceivably a $26 million dead hit if he is not on the roster next year, which is bad. However, he deserves every penny of it. What he said is amazing and should give comfort to the Cowboys fans because he was talking about Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe. And basically he said, those guys can play. That they are actually really, really good. And I'm going to take his word for it. A guy, again, nine Pro Bowls, eight penalties. If that guy says they can play, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. And so that's some of the good news that we have, at least on the offensive line. And if that is the case, and we know there's going to be growing pains, there's growing pains with everybody. But I think about the times that we haven't had Tyron Smith here um, at tackle. And you think about some of the guys that have had to play like uh, Igota starting for us. You know, think about um, uh, uh, Jason Peters, who was old and could only play like 25, you know, snaps a game and stuff. Um, and some of the other guys that have been in there. I'll take the rookie, Tyler Guyton, any day. And I'm going to say Biotis, although he does have one Pro Bowl to his name, I'm not sure that if the Pro Bowl was what it used to be when it used to be in Hawaii, and people players would look at it and say, yeah, this is a chance for me to go hang out in Hawaii on somebody else's dime as opposed to Jacksonville, where now a lot of guys are kind of like, yeah, I really don't want to go just really don't want to go um probably wouldn't be a pro bowler because you have a lot of people that kind of turn it down be that as it may he still 
played well. The only thing about um, Biotis to me was when he had the physical big one techniques over him that they could bull rush him and basically drop him in the lap of Dak Prescott. And so that's where the problem lies. If Cooper Beebe with two all pros on each side of him, let's be clear here, two all pros on each side of him makes life a little easier, um, you know, with, with Tyler Smith going into his third year. You know, you expect him to continue to get better and stronger. And I will also say the other good thing on this offensive line, unlike last year, is going into the season, we're not working on getting guys back. Tyron Smith every year is out in California getting work done on his back and doing rehab and everything else to get him through the season. And last year we had Terrence Steele coming back from ACL. So to start training camp right now, everybody is healthy and definitely on the younger side. And I think I definitely like a lot of that. Um, One more interesting note to me, and I don't know that much about Brazil, um, but we're hearing some of the um, stuff that's going on in Brazil. Apparently things are, you know, you you see the beaches in Rio, I mean, Rio, Rio de Janeiro and all of the Beautiful women, they, they, they really believe in plastic surgery there. You know, that's what the Brazilian Brazilian butt lift. I mean, literally, when they name a cosmetic surgery after your country, you know you do a lot of plastic surgery. But that neither team, there's basically the NFL is telling them they're not allowed to wear green because apparently gang violence how bad is the gang violence in Brazil? I mean, because, you know, we got the Bloods and the Crips, which are red and blue, right? But you got the Cowboys with blue, New England with blue, and, and uh, you know, of course, Buffalo's got blue and red, so they look like they're confused. You got the Giants with blue and red and everything else. You got Denver with some blue. You know, it must be some really bad gangs, really bad, that you can't wear green on the football field. And um, I thought I saw somebody uh, was commenting and saying that they may need to travel in armored vehicles. This is crazy. Tell me again, NFL, why you want to put the Eagles and the Packers in Brazil for a game? I'm, I'm trying to understand that one. I'm trying to understand that one. Somebody explain it to me because I don't understand. All right, good people. I'll see you all in about an hour or so for our live stream. Appreciate you. Peace out.